Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. It's one of a series, IPT Partners webinar series. Today is the 27th of January, 2016. Uh, grow your exports and internationally, grow your exports and business in the United States. Um, special focus today is the British American Business Council and that they can help exporters. Um, well, we thank you for joining us. Um, and um, today we have a great program prepared for you with lots of information. There are polls, there's a survey, there's questionnaire, and our objective is to provide you with useful takeaways to help you grow your exports and your business in the United States. First of all, some housekeeping. Um, do know that this is one in the series, so um, it's all about helping companies grow your exports and business internationally. If you go to www.iptpartnersresources and backslash webinars, uh, you'll find the list of webinars. We conduct two webinars a month, um, all there to help you uh, grow your business. Um, right, this webinar, it's going to be approximately 30 minutes long. Um, there's going to be a brief introduction by myself, then I will hand over to our host, who will introduce the table of contents, today's contents, and our guest expert speaker. There will be four polls, so please, we ask you to participate. Let's have your views. We welcome your opinion. Do know that there are questions as well. There will be questions at the end, and if you look at your screen on the bottom right-hand side there, it says questions. Open that box up, and please, um, tell us, uh, ask us your questions. We, we, uh, we welcome your questions. Um, and um, we have a moderator on board today um, who can be fielding these, and if we don't get back to them uh, immediately, we will answer your questions at a later date. Finally, do know that we're very pleased to provide you with a copy of this recording and the slide deck, which will be made available to you once it has been prepared and curated by our back office. So without more ado, let's get started. I take this opportunity to introduce um, IBT Partners and Susanna Hardy, who is our host presenter today, and our guest expert speaker, Jeffries Brigginshaw, CEO of the British American Business Council. Uh, a word on IBT Partners. IBT Partners, we help UK companies grow their exports and business internationally. And how do we do that? We build international localized websites. And then we provide all of that ongoing online marketing, so search engine optimization, social media, in the target markets that helps companies grow their exports and business. IBT is a private company. Um, we recruit, um, we have business developers, uh, we have um, web developers um, based in the United Kingdom, Germany, France, and the US. Uh, IBT Partners has been in business for over 15 years, providing international online support to our client companies. Susanna Hardy, uh, Susanna is IBT Partners Managing Director for Europe. She has extensive work experience and has lived both in the US and, the U and Europe, including, of course, the United Kingdom. Um, Susanna has worked on we're helping companies uh, develop internationally for over 15 years with IBT Partners. Um, then a word on the BABC. The British American Business Council is the premier transatlantic business network. Um, the BABC has over 20 active chapters and more than 2,000 member companies based in the major business centers throughout North America and the United Kingdom. The BABC is dedicated to helping its member companies build their international business. And Jeffries, Jeffries is CEO of the BABC, as I said, and has a long track record of international trade and regulation. Jeffries is a lawyer by profession. He has worked in Brussels as the executive director for the Transatlantic Business Dialogue. Um, I met Jeffries many years ago, and I can certainly say I have met no one with a greater understanding and knowledge and experience of UK-US business relations. Um, Jeffries has an extensive network, and indeed that is one of the many valued assets of the BABC, as you will learn today. So without more ado, I'm going to hand over to Susanna, and um, the presentation begins. Susanna. Thank you very much, John, and uh, welcome to all the exporters today. So basically what we're going to be talking about here is um, uh, this, this, you know, the USA and how, how uh, you can best access the USA using the BABC services uh, that there are across the United States. I'm going to start off with a very brief sort of bird's eye view of 
how American businesses look at the internet and what they what they really do for um, uh, on on e-commerce, both B2B and B2C, and then hand over to Jeffries. And as John said, uh, you can sit back and enjoy and just listen. Uh, you don't have to take notes. We will be sending out the slide deck, um, but please, we do welcome your questions throughout, and we'll save some time for your questions at the end. So, just getting started. Then, the United States, you know, is clearly one of those markets which are just ideal for websites. And we found working with companies that you know websites do solve a lot of the problems and challenges that exporters face. Uh, you know, a, a really dedicated. Uh, optimal country specific website allows exporters, even smaller companies, to sort of punch above their weight to be really well localized and, and, and easy to find and credible in a local market. Um, uh, and then it has those other attributes like allowing you to sort of organize your marketing or your distributors and things like that via your web presence. So um, uh, this is something that we would really uh, urge you and encourage you to have a strong look at if you're, if you're looking at your export markets and prioritize which ones are the best to have a, a strong online presence for. And clearly, the United States is one. Um, the map on the left actually shows sort of broadband access speeds, and, and, and um, it's interesting. I never really understood why Dakota has such a strong access speed, but there you go. Um, but you can see that all along the coast in particular, there's very strong access speeds. And that also reflects you know, the levels of internet and country um, uh, company uh, uh, dependence on uh, websites. Now, obviously, the USA, large, prosperous, and easy to do business in. But also, as we know, they are a very good early adopters of products, technology, and services. So, you know, really worth uh, looking at for an export market if you can get it right. Not being said, uh, uh, there are challenges to the United States, and Jeffries will be talking about some of those later. But we would just be just like to flag sort of three of them in particular. Um, first of all, that there's a big, big difference between federal and state in terms of legislation and compliance. And remember also that you have to be compliant online, and that's a little bit different from Europe. Secondly, that payment systems are very different from the United Kingdom. And thirdly, that the infrastructure, for example, for mobile and broadband are, dis are not uniform across the United States. So I want also to flag a couple of major themes and trends that are happening at the moment between Europe and the United States. Obviously, in terms of size, I mean, the whole of the EU is larger with 500, or whole of Europe, I should say, is larger with 500 million people. The USA, about 320. Um, and, but obviously, you know, with a, a huge internet uh, uh, audience out there, and, and uh, e-commerce spend is certainly growing in the sort of double-digit levels. Um, and continuing to do so. Just in terms of both the UK and the United States, uh, I think what's important to, to highlight as well is the level of cross-border trade, not just in, in Europe and, and between European countries, but in the United States as well. So having a US website, for example, does reach you into markets like Canada and, uh, and even parts of Mexico. So it's you know, worth, worth looking a look at that as well and adding that to your, to your equation. Um, some differences also in marketplaces. Uh, the United States has, has um, um, marketplace forums like Bonanza and Etsy, and Craigslist, which are larger than the, than the UK. And then, as I mentioned earlier, they do have a tendency to pay slightly differently. I mean, the United States still pays a lot through checks. Um, uh, they don't really have the debit card thing. <laughs> That doesn't sort of work, but a lot of PayPal and PayPal they used to grow um, uh, the online presence. Um, and then finally, just sort of a last thing, really, in terms of uh, the United States and things, how um, uh, uh, the spending on terms of both e-commerce and commerce um, uh, continues to, to, to grow and uh, um, the, the need for a mobile-enabled website. I wanted to flag also this slide here, these two examples of country-specific websites to get you some feel of local credibility. On the left-hand side, you have Jaguar Cars uh, UK, which is a strong sort of, you know, it's, it's, it's all about sort of James Bond, and it says mean business there and things like that. And on the right-hand side, it's just subtly tweaked. It's still about a sort of bond element with at your service, but it's all about service, which is a very important aspect for American consumers. So that this is just a, a sophisticated 
uh, web uh, localization uh, in terms of design and advertisement, but in terms of message as well. So uh, my point really is that localizing a website is not just about a pure translation. It's also about getting the architecture of the website correct, the image, the brand, the testimonials, obviously things like dates and vocabulary and things like that. And one last little note that I would add, you know, videos. Uh, the Americans use a lot of videos and they are very worthwhile putting on your onto your website. So that was just a couple of words on sort of the online presence and with that I'm going to hand you over to Jeffries. Jeffries, up to you thing, please. Thank you and good morning. Good morning to, to, to everybody out there. Susanna, uh, John, thank you for your collaboration. I'm really enjoying uh, our online uh, collaboration, so a great opportunity. I'm going to tell you about two things. One, about the uh, US market proposition and, and two, about how the British American Business Council that I lead can, can help you. But the US market proposition is that if you win, you get rich and, and retire early. If this was a heist movie, um, we might add, or die trying, it's not a heist movie, movie and so um, it, there's no death, um, but I do want to tell you that some of the conditions for entry for doing business are more complicated than you imagine. The road to riches in the US is paved with disaster stories. If you're of a certain age, um, you may remember the Bay City Rollers, famous here, not famous in the United States, or more recently, Tesco, huge and famous here, but uh, just exited the US market in the US. So uh, get rich, retire early if you win, but the route can be paved with difficulties, and that's what we want to talk about a little bit. Um, let's look at the macro background. Um, lots of people are doing business in the US. Uh, the UK happens to be the top trading partner for the US uh, globally. Um, and that means uh, exports from the UK to the US of 38 billion, um, uh, exports in services, and, and those exports are of, of goods, in services 26.5 billion, so it's a really strong relationship, um, you know, much bigger, for example, than the UK-China relationship, where total exports are around 15 billion, so we're way more than double that, so it's a big place, a big market, and we're doing well as a, as a nation. Um, so, you know, what are the things that, that make up those numbers? Um, and you can look at tariff lines um, for, for this, but roughly speaking, you're, if you're playing into any of these spaces, then you have good company already. So machinery and transport equipment, chemicals, fuels, uh, manufactured goods, commodities, other manufactured goods, beverages, tobacco, food, live animals, crude materials, animal and vegetable oils, and services. So financial services, professional services, um, and other advisory services. So, you know, huge areas of opportunity and lots of jobs. Just let's not forget that. Lots of jobs involved. So a million UK jobs um, here in the UK dependent on um, US headquartered organizations and around the same um, in the US for UK headquarters companies. And a lot of British exports then in turn creating sort of business in the US and coming out as US exports to other places. So hugely um, uh, uh, successful existing relationship into which you're playing. Um, the US market is also, you know, I go back to the, the point about, well, why is it the place where you get rich? Because if you win, uh, it is the largest economy in the world. It does have the largest consumer um, uh, population uh, to buy. Um, it does have um, global supply chains which start out of the US into which you can play. It does have a productive and skilled workforce with high mobility, especially across state borders, which we'll come on to talk about as a, uh, a complexity in, in, in a moment. Um, there is a comparable business culture. It is not the same business culture. Um, there are no language barriers, and of course, there's a strong rule of law. I make the point about it being uh, not the same business culture, and that's something that you really do have to think about. That um, you know, let's say time for breakfast or time for dinner, the types of things that you would naturally do here, you, you can't assume that they will be the same there. So it's worth thinking about um, uh, before you you really get down to the detail. On the tax side, um, you know, the tax system of any market anywhere in the world is something that is complex uh, in most cases 
And in the US, that is also true. Um, it is an area where you're likely to be wanting to take advice. Um, and ranges, I mean, the, the complexity ranges across a federal, national taxation environment with federal corporate income tax, um, with bans of federal corporate income tax that could range, you know, between 15 and 35 percent. But also at the state level and at municipal level, you also have tax risk, liability, and complexity. Um, for example, in sales tax. And sales tax is a complexity for you to manage whether or not you're online or in-state in, in or in other ways trying to transact um, in-state or across state borders. So think about tax, obviously. Um, you know, going on to, um, we've talked about the, the relationship and how that's a strong background. And um, we want to talk a little bit in a moment, um, not much, um, but a rate, something to put on your radar is a, a trade negotiation open between the EU and the US. Of course, the UK has to stay in the EU to be able to get the benefit of this trade deal if it does happen. But that could, could, could considerably increase the size of the economic pie available and um, uh, remove some of the barriers that currently stop people from taking full advantage of uh, the US marketplace, like having different standards for products and services or different entry requirements for the provision of professional services, etc. The thing that we really uh, want to make a point of, though, and it plays into why we as a network are useful to you, is that market entry in the US is most likely to be at a local level, um, based on local markets, state markets. Now, you may have a national-facing website, um, but it is very much worth your while thinking of the specificities of particular places where you think your products or services may be selling or being bought. We'll come back to that in a moment. Um, but other things that people think about a lot in the US is the litigation culture and liability risk. And that is out there. Um, it is neither as apocalyptic as people sometimes worry about, but it is not something that you can ignore. So um, it, it tends to be something that people worry about. Um, Visas, just like anywhere, that's a hassle and it costs money. So it's a complexity of doing business in the US, which, for example, does not um, exist in the UK. So, um, you know, the other point is really that kind of with the US, we think there's a business case because we think cultural links and because we think, well, it's a big relationship, so it must work. And Jack, that sometimes is the enemy of careful thought. So with Jack, that, I know we want to go into another poll. Jeff Fries, yeah, indeed. May I jump in there and say this is a perfect time. You've outlined and up the top there says why the USA. Um, so we'd like to launch a, a poll number two, um, and it is launching there. So what is most attractive for you, re the US market? Um, uh, is it uh, size, uh, corporate, uh, corporate tax, corporate tax, or the strong rule of law? 100% uh, the size. It's all about size. Size matters. Um, how about business culture or productive skill force? Um, U.S. skill force. No, everybody is sticking with size. Well, look, I'm going to close that out. It seems simple. It's, it's all about size. Thank you. It's all about size, um, and that goes back to the kind of fundamental proposition here, which is that you get it right, you win big. Um, but to get it right and win big, some of the considerations that, that we, we, we put before you are really about are really the, the, up, the other side and the downside of that scale, which is that it is not a manageable scale. You know, very, very few products or services are going to make a U.S. market entry. They're going to build business through you know, various channels and various forms of awareness and um, a, a availability, but they're likely to be based on a strong research um, element, so really working out where the product and service will sell and the people who will buy it in that particular place. Um, and then perhaps thinking particularly when you get to physical aspects of market entry or participation or presence into your ability to be able to staff and manage geography, um, which is obviously a logistic um, uh, you know, reality check. Um, modes of entry, this is nothing new to, to either those of you who are there or thinking of it. It's the true, it's the same list you'd think about for any country, and it's true, of course, for the US from, you know, online through to, um, you know, a market entry on the ground, um, using trade fairs to build contacts, networks, and, and, and customers, 
deciding as to whether you're going to go via an agent or a distributor, and that's a detailed consideration. You know, we know a lot about that. Our partners, IBT, know a lot about that. So, you know, those are conversations that you should be thinking to have as you you, you deepen your kind of uh, market uh, entry or business plan uh, proposition. Um, and of course, you know, behind all of that, um, you can buy a company there um, or register a company there, um, and you know, build a business out um, with people, you know, a local tax state tax status from on the ground. Um, and of course, you, you, you're going to worry a little bit about owning the product of your inventiveness and creativity there, so the IP rules. Um, so some things to think about. And just turning briefly now, um, I know we want to spend more time talking and, and perhaps going into Q&A um, if I don't get arrested. Um, excuse me for the noise interruption momentarily. Um, uh, about the, 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 the network which I represent. So John kindly introduced that network. Um, as, as, as a substantial force uh, in the US-UK channel, both here in the UK where I'm talking to you today um, and across the US. So we have 20 or so chapters, 2,000 member companies, and we're really about helping our members build their international businesses. Um, we're across the US, and the map shows you where, um, and so when you're coming to the US and thinking into the US and establishing yourself in the US, we're where you see us on those maps, and so we hope we can be useful. Likewise, outbound, um, we're in the UK, uh, strategically present along the backbone, London, Birmingham, Manchester, and into Scotland. Um, and we um, provide, um, sorry. Okay. I think so, we're going to have another poll. You want another perhaps. poll? Okay. So Come let's on. do another poll. Absolutely. We've gone through the draft. Ready to yeah. jump in there? If now is the time. So here we go. This is um, our third poll. Um, and we would like to ask you about a number of the um, relationships up there, the engagement that you have with any of the following. Um, engagement with the BABC itself, British American Business Council, uh, the CBI, UKTI, Fed, um, the Federation of Small Businesses UK, or the US Commercial Services. These are all excellent organizations. Um, leading off with BABC, uh, Jeffries is... Um, outlining all the capabilities and strengths there, but um, UKTI is out there to help, indeed, as are the US commercial services. So we see UKTI out there with 78%, BABC um, 33%, and the Federation of Small Businesses at 11%. Uh, nobody taking contact with the US commercial services or CBI. Well, look, thank you for that. Very interesting. Closing that poll now, we have one poll left. Thank you. Thank you, John. And just to, to move towards a close of these, this, the, the, these remarks anyway, we, we provide networks and we provide bus, valuable business contacts um, within, if you want, a British American business community um, here and in the US that really do um, provide sort of tangible environments in which uh, you can understand your uh, business uh, opportunities and uh, build your business contacts and even your commercial um, business development in those networks. Um, we also have great connections with the, the type of people that we, we've been talking about in this poll, uh, UKTI, the US Commercial Service, etc. A um, couple of examples of the kinds of things we do, you know, things that you'd expect to see in this channel, meet the exporters type events, we've done that in Birmingham, um, you know, an economic lunch, so we do a lot of content-driven um, uh, eventing, which provides something to talk about as we network to build businesses. Uh, um, and, and, you know, we've talked around um, uh, TTIP quite a lot. In Scotland coming up, um, we have um, a really special event coming up with the uh, Deputy Assistant U.S. Trade Representative responsible for promoting the SME business case um, from the U.S., and she's coming up, Christina Sevilla, to join us in, on the 18th of February um, in Scotland um, and talk about increasing trade and investment, particularly with an SME focus. Um, and so that could be very interesting in, in Scotland. We produce guides, um, physical uh, published guides and online guides, really with all the facts and information you need to start that journey um, or to deepen that journey if you're already on it. Um, and we are, as I mentioned, involved with some, you know, a lot of regulatory influence and policy advocacy, which means that if you are suffering a barrier to entry, for example, Let's say there's a product standard that you need to comply with, but which you don't know about. 
um, and which is burdensome and puts you at a disadvantage to a US competitor in market who um, uh, has already swallowed that cost. That's something which um, in the longer run, two years, three years out, is the subject that can be sort of moved within a, a kind of a, 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 a negotiation context such as that is provided by the Transatlantic Trade Investment Partnership. In the shorter run, in terms of short-term fixes, that's where UKTI can be helpful in locating and identifying the, um, if you want, the information that will help you uh, not circumvent the barrier, but understand the barrier and comply um, in the short term. So um, policy and regulatory advocacy are helpful. Um, and, and finally, um, for my part, um, you know, we um, once in every 10 years, uh, it, we, we bring that network, that North American network to town, um, London town. Um, and so on May the 11th uh, and 12th, um, we will be here in London um, around the topic of future cities, smart, sustainable and social um, with our network. And so please join us. Um, and with that, let me pass back to Susanna, I think, to yeah. take us on. Thank you very much, Jeffrey. Yeah, thank you. That was a great overview. And I just really want to close out with a couple of summaries from our point of view. And basically, just uh, I mean, these are these are really UK exporters must have, um, you know, for 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 looking uh, for getting into the US market uh, and having a digital online place. And the first sort of golden rule I think that we need to remember is. Google in the United States is not the same as Google in the UK. Obviously, it is, uh, a, you know, it's more obvious when you've got, you know, a different language, like, you know, Google in Germany or something, but even when you have the same language, English, the USA is a very different market online than the UK. The search engine optimization is not the same. So if you might be optimized for a UK market, you are not necessarily optimized for the US market. And I think Jeffrey's also pointed out some of the various um, uh, regional varieties that you can get and specificities within within the US. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out was the, the, the use and strength of social media in the United States is different than the way it's used in Europe. Uh, you know, people use Facebook and LinkedIn in a very different way in the United States than they do in Europe. Uh, and businesses are very engaged in social media. And finally, just you know, just remember, um, you know, just remember to to make sure that Google likes you. Be be local. Be active. Susanna. Uh, indeed, indeed, absolutely. And so, when you are in the states and you go googling there, and then you come back to the UK, and you can you can see the difference. You can. Um, Google with the same keywords and get very, very different results. Time for our fourth and final poll. So I'm going to launch this, please. We'd love to have your feedback. This launch, here we go. There it is. It says, do you have a country-specific U.S. website? Clearly, um, a lot of companies do. Big companies do. Um, shall we say all the large corporates do? Susanna gave you an example of, of Jaguar there. Um, um, it is absolutely relevant. Um, if you spend enough time there, you get to see. Um, and what are the results here? We're saying 13% say yes, 50% say no, and 33% are saying that they plan to do so within the next six months. That's great. Look, thank you very much for that feedback. That closes our polls. Um, you will have all of this information made available to you, by the way, Friday. Uh, that'll be automatic. I close that final poll and back to Susanna. Thank you, John. So just a couple of sort of, you know, conclusions from our point of view. Uh, you know, our, our final sort of message, but just, just make sure that you really like those country-specific websites. Uh, a great, a great uh, affordable and effective way of reaching into the United States market and with BABC there to, to help you to connect to the local communities as well. And with that, I think we're going to turn over to some questions and uh, um, some questions that perhaps have come in. I don't know if, John, you've been Absolutely. doing Absolutely. Look, thank you very much indeed. The question box on the bottom right-hand side of your screen there called questions, don't hesitate to send them in. We've got a, a list of them here. I'm going to grab um, one, uh, the first one, actually. It says, what happens? Um, this is, Jeffries, this is for you, please. Um, what happens if the UK leaves the EU? That is a big question. Will this affect UK-US business relations? Jeffries. That is, a, that is a big question, um, and um, I would start by saying that if you have a great product or a great service, you'll continue to be able to sell that great product or great service into the US. But it, it is likely also that the conditions under which you sell uh, or market or 
aim to succeed with that great product or service could change um, and would likely change actually to your detriment. And, and I'm mainly thinking around kind of tariff and um, uh, regulatory uh, conditions. Um, you know, uh, many of those, and all of them, are currently negotiated as part of a block, um, the European Union. And if they were to be negotiated separately, as they would have to be, then you know, size matters. And it tends to be the case that when you have equal markets, the EU is 500 million consumers, and the US is pretty big too, hundreds of million. I don't know if it's exactly 500, it's a little bit less than that. Um, uh, then you get kind of a parity in conditions. When you have a small market, which we would relatively be, then you're going to get less parity. So you could imagine the conditions may get a little bit more, more difficult. If you have great products and services, you'll still win. Thank you. And, and jumping quickly, because there are a lot of questions here, go to the next one. Again, Jeffries, this is please. Um, can the BABC connect me to potential end clients and distributors in the USA? We can. Um, we, we run a database, a matching database. We provide uh, in geography uh, connections to local business communities and starting places in geography to networks where businesses can be do inside our membership network, but also as a platform for business um, through that geography. So um, yes, but not in terms of uh, databases. Very interesting. Thank you very much. And um, a absolutely good, relevant question here. Somebody wants to know how much does the BABC cost to join, and how do you do that? So that varies, um, and the reason it varies is because the BABC um, that I lead uh, is a, an umbrella organisation. It is an umbrella organisation for the chapters, the chapters which we identified on maps. And each of those uh, chapters has a, a membership fee. Uh, the BABC does not have a membership fee, um, so you choose to join chapters which you think are relevant to you. Um, Houston, Texas, Philadelphia, Birmingham, uh, where, wherever uh, you, you think we could be useful. And each of those has a, a membership fee, which range from the hundreds of dollars to the low thousands, basically. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. And, and uh, an online question. So, Susanna, I'm going to direct this over to you. Please, um, Susanna, here it's, can one website dedicated to the USA cover the full country, both East and West Coast? Uh, thanks, John. That's a great question because um, uh, we have cases, um, with one client we have, it's so important to him, one state within the United States is so important he basically has a state-centric website. Okay, it's a U.S. website, but it's really focused on one state. Um, you know, in theoretically, yes, of course, one website covers the entire United States. Uh, um, I would just point out that a lot of our clients also say, "Hey, can I get a Spanish website?" And that's 34% you know, of Americans now consider Spanish to be their first language. Um, so, you know, you can tailor it as much as, 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 as you like, but most of our clients have one website that covers everything from, you know, Alaska to Hawaii, Maine to Los Angeles. And that's very interesting because there's another question just here. It says, does a U.S. specific website also cover Canada and Latin America? Mm -hmm. Well, um, Again, theoretically, yes. And certainly, um, if you have an, an English language website dedicated to the United States, you're, you're basically also covering Canada. Can, can, Canadians will connect with that. But um, your search engine optimization gets a little bit tweaked. Your reliability and accessibility in that country is a little bit less. So I would really say, you know, your, your, your primary objective, if your primary objective is the United States, have a US website. If it's a primary objective is Canada, have a Canadian website. Um, Latin America obviously is a little bit harder because it is Spanish speaking. So again, your search engine optimization will be different. Um, and But we have a lot of US websites which are both English and Spanish precisely to, to reach out into that whole North American uh, and, and Mesoamerican sphere. Thank you, Tom. 
thank you very much indeed. I think we would just go for one last question. Uh, Jeffrey Zeri, a question here that says, look, okay, looking to open an office in Detroit, um, do I need to? Do we need to register a U.S. business before we open the office and start trading? Do you have a view on that? Or do you want one of your team to get back on that? Um, I can give um, two or three pointers. Um, first, we have a chapter in Detroit. Uh, two, Detroit is a great city to be thinking about um, these days, you know, regeneration underway. Um, it's a great story um, to play into um, and, you know, the economic underpinning of Detroit and the Michigan region, you know, has great heritage and substance. So, great. In terms of companies, so you can trade um, uh, through a branch um, of a UK company in the US and you can uh, set up a US corporation. Um, that's going to be the subject where you'll need some detailed advice um, in terms of the corporate taxation that would apply to both. Um, but our understanding is that um, quite often the decision flows towards establishment of a US uh, entity um, in, in the US and so in Detroit in this case, which would then you know, be the shell out of which you do business, hire people, etc., etc., etc. That's something you need some 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 advice on, though. Um, but as I say, we we have a chapter there, and I'm sure they'd be you know eager to be a part of how you think about making that market work for you. Jeffries, thank you very much indeed. And in fact, yes, I'm actually going to be in, in Michigan uh, next month uh, in Detroit, and uh, great city, like it, uh, very very much indeed. I think that uh, has to bring us to an end. Um, we've overshot by five minutes, which I think is probably good considering our track record. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit longer than that. I would like to thank you, uh, thank you, um, thank you all for joining us today. Thank you for joining us for this webinar. Um, as I say, one in a part of a series of learning webinars. If you enjoyed it and would like to come back and enjoy more, look at um, ibdpartners.com backslash resources backslash webinars. Um, Susanna, thank you very much indeed. Jeffries, thank you. Thank you both very much. Um, it has been really um, uh, most interesting. There's a lot of information there. Um, I would say please do all be aware that this recording and the slide deck will be made available to you by Friday, you will receive an inbound email um, with various links to this. So um, this information can be made available. And there's a lot more information at www.babc.org and www.ibtpartners.com. So thank you very much indeed from myself, John Worthington, Susanna, Jeffries. Hey, thank you very much. Happy exporting. Thank you.